Hi, praise the Lord. I hope all is well with everyone today. God bless you. Uh, today I want to get right into uh, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2. And I want to talk about snared, being in a snare. Uh, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2. We're going to go over there. And it reads, you are snared with the words of your mouth. You are taken, taken with the words of your mouth. And, and what Proverbs 6, chapter 2, uh, Proverbs chapter 6, verse 2 is talking about is being trapped by the words of our mouth. Being baited or lured by the words of our mouth. Uh, think, for instance, a uh, fisherman, he puts a net when he's fishing, he's out on his boat on the, on the lake, on the water, on the river. Uh, and he puts a net in the water to catch the fish, snare them into this net, take them into this net. That's the same kind of a picture uh, that we're talking about here, about being caught with our words, put, lured into a trap by our own words. Uh, my husband had a dream couple of weeks ago that he shared with me and he said in this dream he heard this the devil lust for your words he needs your words powerful amen the devil lust for your words he needs your words in order to trap you so that he can trap you by your words so that he can put you in a snare because of your words. He baits or lures us. Just waiting for us to say something contrary to what God says about us. Something contrary to the word of God. You know the Bible teaches us that Satan is a deceiver. He misleads. He steals. He destroys. So what I'm talking about here today is he comes for our words. Like my husband saw in his dream. The devil lust for your words is what he heard in the dream. The devil needs your words. He comes after our words to trap us, to get in, in order to gain access into our lives so that he can wreak havoc. And how does he do that? How do we let him in? Well, we know one of the ways we let him in is by sin, sin in our life, but one of the ways he also tries to gain access is through our mouths, through what we say. And we can give him permission because he has to have permission. We can give him permission to enter into our lives and wreak havoc, to do damage, to destroy by the words that we release. Speaking words that are uh, in opposition to the will of God for us. He can gain access through that. So as my husband saw in the dream, he's lusting for your words. He needs your words. So the Bible tells us that we can be snared. The words that we speak can put us in a, a, a snare. And I'm not going to go into any list of the different types of things that we say wrong. Because we know, we know what we've been saying. We know the type of words we've been speaking. We know the words that we've released that we shouldn't have. Uh, 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 2, verse 11, part B of that verse says, We are not ignorant of his devices. Gaining entrance into the affairs of our life via our words is a device. Listen to me. I'm going to repeat that. Gaining entrance, because if you're saying something that you know is off, you know is contrary, you're saying something that you know you actually don't want that to happen in your life. You actually don't want that to occur. Gain, he can gain entrance, it, entrance into the affairs of our lives via our words, and this is a device. This is a scheme that he uses to lure us into saying something contrary. It's like he's just there saying, say it, say it, say it, say it, because he wants you to release that. You release that, he has permission. You've given him access to get in. When we understand through our words, we give, we can give power 
to our faith because faith is also released through our words. Or we can release our words for the adversary to gain entrance, right? Life and death is in the power of the tongue. We speak faith. We release our words for faith to be released. But we also, and this is what we have to be careful of, we also can release our words for our adversary to gain access. And so what do we do? We learn to outwit, outwit him. By not speaking contrary. We can learn to outwit him. Being careful. You know. Praying and asking God. Oh God. Set a guard over my mouth. That I do not say those things. That are contrary to your will for my life. Set a guard over my mouth. We can learn to outwit him. By not speaking contrary. To the word of God. Uh, Ephesians chapter 4 verse 7 says this. Listen to this. Give no place to the devil. That we might have, uh, uh, that we might have, that he might have a play to get in. Give no place to the devil. That's Ephesians chapter 4, 27. Why? Why give no place? That he may not have a play, you know, that we may not give him a play to get in. Sometimes we just need to do Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 2. And Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 2 says, Let thy words be few. Let thy words be few. Sometimes there are times that we need to just not say anything. Just, you know, let our words be few. Don't speak to that. Don't answer that. Don't feel like we have to have a reply, right? Especially if we know, especially if we know we're getting ready to say something that we're going to regret. I can remember uh, times, I don't do this anymore because I learned. I can remember times that when I would be tired, that I would say, oh, I'm tired. Oh, I'm just so tired. Oh, I'm tired. And you know what I learned from that? I realized that the more I said, oh, I'm tired. Just so tired in my body. You know what I came to realize? That the more I said that, the tighter I actually got. That was actually a current in my body because I was releasing that and I, I was giving access to that and I was giving life to that and I was making it worse. It was increasing because I was saying it. And I came to realize that. You know, stop saying that, even though you might be tired. But do you realize what you're doing here? The more you say that, you're actually feeling tireder. You're actually feeling worse in your body. I learned this. I learned this lesson. We cannot afford to be flippant about the words coming out of our mouths. We cannot be flippant. We cannot be irresponsible with the words that we speak, right? The Bible says we shall know the truth and the truth shall make us free. Free from what? Being an easy target, snared by our very own words, by the very own words coming out of our mouths. We can be snared by that. We can give access to the devil, you know, to gain interest, as I said before, you know, to wreak havoc in our lives. We don't want that havoc. Wrecked in our lives. We, we're, we're in a spiritual attack now. We're in a battle now. And we're in a battle or a spiritual attack now because we did that. We did that with our words. You know, Proverbs talks a lot about words. Uh, and Proverbs, for instance, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 20 says, Says thou a man that is hasty in his words? There is more hope of a fool than him. Listen to what Proverbs said. Proverbs 29, 20. Seest thou a man that's hasty in his words, quick to speak, quick to talk, quick to have something to say, and not really being careful you know, about what he's saying, not really being responsible with the words that he's speaking out of his mouth? We just go back to Ecclesiastes 5 and 2. Let thy words be few. Amen. Satan comes for our words. And 2 Corinthians teaches us, chapter 2, verse 11, 
We are not to be ignorant of his devices. This is a device. And we will give no place to the devil. You know, our attitude has to be, no, you're not getting in because of what I did. Now, you're not going to get in because I was flipping about the words that I was speaking. You know, and what happens when we release those words, when we know that we have, we get those words back, render those words powerless to have any effect over your life or your, your home or your family or whatever you release those words for. You know, we get those words back, grab that word, those words back, repent over the words that you spoke and render those words powerless to have an adverse effect over your life. Amen. So we don't want to be snared. We don't want to be trapped. We don't want to be trapped like, like someone setting a trap for an animal or setting a trap to catch a bird or setting a trap, you know, putting a, a, the net down to catch fish. We don't want to be snared like that. We don't want to be trapped like that. Neither do we want to be ignorant of our adversaries' devices. Amen. We want to speak life at all times as much as humanly possible. And when you don't, you repent over the words that you released and re render them powerless to have any effect over our lives. Amen. God bless you. Talk to you soon.